Now you're worried? Now you're worried? Now is when you decide to worry. I was worried way back when you put out Captain Marvel. That big old piece of trash. Disney is worried that Woke is ruining their brand after consistent flops. The most beloved era of Disney was in the 1990s when all the classics were released that people still know and love today. <laughs> the Little Mermaid, Aladdin, The Lion King, Mulan, and many more told the kind of magical stories that stayed in our hearts along with catchy music that could get stuck in your head for days. The period, this period is often referred to as the Renaissance era. And many suspect that these movies are loved by women everywhere because Disney successfully captured the brilliance of timeless uh, and the timelessness of femininity. Jasmine was seductive and required her man to work for her. Ariel taught us about sacrifice and trust. Mulan was both brave and family oriented. All of the princesses had their own personalities and opinions, but they each made room for a prince to come along. She's not going to be saved by the prince. They come along and sweep them off their feet. None was too proud to reject a man. <laughs> weird, weird. These traditional Disney films were never political, and the themes were always centered on universal, relatable stories that brought people together rather than driving them apart. However, Disney has certainly lost its way over the last couple of decades. They've lost their touch at producing hit movies that resonate with both young children and adults. Disney movies have taken a turn for the worse. Turning Red, the Disney Pixar film of 2022, which I did not see, that was acclaimed for its heartwarming narrative and representation, did not achieve high commercial success compared to other Pixar films. With a global box office of only 20 million against a production budget, of $175 million, it's ranked among the biggest box office bombs of 2022. The, the supposed reason for its un uh, underperformance is attributed to its simultaneous release on Disney+. Plus. This strategy allowed audiences to view the film at home, significantly affecting its worldwide box office earnings. However, it left people wondering if it just wasn't good enough to draw in audiences. There were many parents who expressed their disappointment with the type of inappropriate content that was being delivered to teenagers for the sake of sending a particular message to the world. I guess I gotta find out about this. Is it about periods or something turning red? Like, what's it about? The Disney animated movie Strange World also faced a significant box office shortfall with an Estimated loss of $147 million in 2022. A notably woke aspect of the film uh, is the introduction of Disney's first openly LGBTQ teenager character who discusses his same-sex crush. The film's underperformance is attributed to various factors, including its inclusion of sexual discussions, which deterred many parents from allowing their children to watch it. Some critics suggest that modern parents are more informed through social media and may choose to avoid content with inappropriate sexual themes for their children. Uh, I think that that's true. Uh, social media, I mean, it's all you gotta do is scroll a little bit on Twitter or Instagram or something. You're gonna eventually run into something. You're gonna find out something you never knew. Uh, let's see. Similar issues in the past were observed with Pixar's Lightyear, which included Gay Kiss and initially underperformed at the box office. Chris Evans, a voice actor in Lightyear, criticized those who opposed uh, the movie's inclusive content. However, what he considered inclusive was just seen as annoyingly woke to the general public. Parents have generally never been on board with showing their children progressive content, regardless of the political message companies like Disney are 
uh, desperately trying to sin. Elemental, a Pixar movie, actually defied additional poor box office performance to become a significant hit. Released in June, it had the worst opening in Pixar history, with $29.6 million at the domestic box office. However, the film, which cost $200 million to produce, gradually gained momentum, earning nearly $500 million globally. It currently ranks as the ninth top-grossing film of the year, surpassing Marvel's latest Ant-Man sequel. But uh, this was a, an anomaly compared to the rest of the Disney flops in the past two years. Now, Disney is again experiencing a box office bomb with its Thanksgiving release wish. The newest princess film that seeks to copy Encanto's success, but due to its poor, poor storytelling, boring songs, and progressive messages, it also has flopped. Disney has disclosed that it invested a staggering $965 million in four high-profile projects in 2023, which, unfortunately, that rhymed on the blade of the game, bars turned out to be significant flops. Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania, The Little Mermaid, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and Secret Invasion. This revelation comes amid a cost-cutting initiative led by CEO Bob Iger, who returned to lead the company in November 2022. Iger emphasized the need to reduce uh, production costs, acknowledging the exorbitant expenses involved in uh, creating content. In early November, Bob Iger said, at the time the pandemic hit, we were learning, uh, leaning into a huge increase in how much we were making, and I've always felt that quality can be actually a negative. Quantity can actually uh, be a negative when it comes to quality. The fact of the matter is, they were putting out garbage content. If they had focused on the quality of the storytelling telling and staying fundamentally sound to the characters, they would have had all hits. And I think that's exactly what happened. We lost some focus. <laughs> Typically, the budgets of movies and streaming shows are kept confidential, as studios usually lump those costs into their overall expenses without detailing individual project expenditures. However, Disney's Production activities in the UK, a clearer uh, yeah, in the UK provide a clearer picture of their spending due to the unique financial reporting requirements in that country. Studios operating in the UK must set up separate companies for each production to avail a tax rebate of up to twenty five percent. No wonder they shoot over there on their expenditures. These companies are required to file financial statements, which reveal detailed spending data. Disney has been leveraging the UK's incentives scheme by filming more content there. This strategy, however, has led to significant investments in some of its most expensive and least successful productions of the year. A notable example is the Marvel Studios superhero film Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. Despite spending a hefty $193.2 million on pre-production and filming, the movie opened to a mediocre box office and reviews. Uh, Disney faces, uh, let me see, this situation illustrated the challenges that Disney faced in managing production costs while striving to create compelling content that resonates with audiences and succeeds financially. Disney is finally acknowledging the significant impact of wokeness. Excuse me. Had some soup earlier. Vegetable soup. Eat your vegetable skits. You'll be nice and strong. And culture wars. And that's a message right there I don't think parents will have a problem with. And culture wars on its operations. This admission was made at its annual financial report filed with Securities and Exchange Commission for the fiscal year ending in September 10th. The report highlights various aspects of Disney's performance and future risks. Disney employees uh, employs about 225,000 workers worldwide 
and emphasizes its commitment to creating a more inclusive and diverse workplace. This commitment aligns with its diversity, equity, and inclusion of objectives, which focus on reflecting the life experiences of its audience and supporting diverse voices in creative and production themes. And I've already talked about this. Like, they, when you watch the movies, you can actually see all the boxes being checked. And we all know that the majority of the time when you see, uh, when people are living their lives out, most people are with the race that they are. So black people hang with black people, white people hang with white people, yellow hang with yellow, red hang with red, brown hang with brown. The majority of the time, yes. If we do live in a diverse world. There's different races in certain countries all together. Melting pot America. Hello. You, know, you see different races all the time. But you can see them checking the boxes for everybody to be in there. Okay. White, black, brown, yellow, red. Okay. LGBTQ, L, LGBTQ, G, LGBTQ, B. All right. Um, um, let me see. Uh, uh, personal crutches. Uh, wheelchair, deaf, uh, you can just see it and it starts to look so unrealistic. It doesn't reflect the world we live in. Yes, all these different types of people exist in the world, but you just set up these scenes where it's like, what are you doing? And then they all talk and have these different conversations, these social and political conversations and woke conversations that nobody really ever has in those situations in the movie. It's just, it's ridiculous. It does not mirror our modern world. And our modern world has been diverse for a long time. And you were better at it before you started this crap. Financially, Disney reported revenues of $88.9 billion for the fiscal year of 2023, marking a 7% increase from 2022. Despite this growth, the company has reduced spending on film and TV content, cutting it from $29.8 billion to $27.2 billion. Iger plans to further reduce content spending to $25 billion next year. Along with these cuts, Disney has also implemented staff reductions and other expenses, achieving around $7.5 billion in cost savings. Disney's involvement in culture wars and public debates has had widespread effects. The company acknowledges risks related to misalignments with public and consumer preferences, which affect demand and profitability across various segments, including broadcast Cable, theaters, internet, mobile technology, theme parks, hotels, resorts, and consumer products. This misalignment has led to changes in adapting to market changes in economic or social climates. Further, consumers' perceptions of our position on matters of public interest, including our efforts to achieve certain of our environmental and social goals often differ wildly and present risks to our reputation and brands, Disney admitted, acknowledging that consumer preferences impact revenue. Man, man, man. And there's more to this. There's just more, a little bit, a few, few more. Um, paragraphs but that says it right there man that says it right there that's it's crazy it's crazy man oh man <laughs> this is so ridiculous I, I i don't know you know put it this way okay so you finally admitted it in your reports and everything so what are you gonna do now huh because we are hearing rumors that you're going to continue to do the same garbage. So you acknowledge it. Okay. You have a concern, but you're going to keep doing the same crap. 
Sounds like uh, one of those definitions of insanity. <laughs> well, post comments down below. Let me know what you all think. And if you enjoyed my thoughts on this, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe, and share.